and we are live. Welcome to a brand new episode of Que Paso Podcast. My name is Eduardo. I'm Ernest. I'm Al, and today we're going to talk about uh, Latinos and their least favorite cousins, Latinxes. Uh, we have two <laughs> guests today. Today, uh, Tyler and Abril, thanks for coming. Thank you for inv inviting me. Same. Of course. So, Latinxes, the possibly the most hated minority, I will say. <laughs> no, we shouldn't even give them that that dignity. Um, they are outcasts. They are like untouchables. They're Dalits. They no, was. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah that's just as bad. They, they're <laughs> the lowest of the low. Um, they do the social justice jobs that the other SJWs don't want to do. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah it's um it's kind of interesting because um it's everyone a... here is a, everyone here is a latino well uh tyler is an honorary one but <laughs> but we don't get into that but the thing is is that um a lot of people wonder what is exactly a latinx and if you when you ask a latino they will tell you it's a slur and i think it is because it's a word that is an American invention that uh, the, the claim is this. The, oh, we do it to be inclusive. Um, there is already an inclusive term. When you say Latino, you're mentioning women, men, children, pretty much everyone. But no, you have to add an X. Why? Because apparently there's, it's because of people who, uh, I don't know, have like non-binary or stuff like that. But here's the thing. My problem is this. I don't think... I want to change my entire language that has hundreds of years of written history just because a white American in California want oh no, because it's, I, it can't be gendered because I'm American. I know better and I have to change it. And, and that's what the, the issue stems from. And they even, um, shame on you if you can pronounce it. The other day I was, as usual, fighting in the internet. And this lady, I was telling her that it's hard to pronounce for us who speak how who Spanish is is our first language mm -hmm. because I don't know how to use the sound. And she was no 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 no. It's not hard. It's not hard at all. Children can do it, yeah, so you but, can do but it. Whenever people try to pronounce it, it's usually with the English pronunciation rule. However, mm -hmm. they're not kind of considering like the different pronunciation rules when it comes down to Spanish because how they pronounce alphabet is different in Spanish in comparison to mm -hmm. in English. How did you pronounce yeah. the term? Because I say mm -hmm. Latinx. I say Latinx. <laughs> uh, yeah, I said it too. Um, and now they're going with uh, Chicanox. Oh, and oh, and here in Chile, it's actually worse because they're starting <laughs> to, instead of using an E, instead of using an X, they start to using an E. Like, so instead of chicos y chicas, they say chiques. <laughs> what? <laughs> but you need to what? change the entire word because chique yeah. is with a Q. If mm -hmm. you want to only change a word, use. All I can think about now is chicles. Yeah, Jesus. Yeah, and, and, and the, the funny thing it is that have sense. it just want to point out that it's funny that first of all, my, the people who are promoting this here in Chile are mostly the feminists. Um, <laughs> yes. um, I, will, I, will, I gotta be honest. I gotta be honest. Like because of this, this weird cultural shift that Chile is is going into, and this weird changing of of Spanish. I I, I have to tell you this. Juan Velasco Alvarado should have invaded you in the seventies. It would have been so much better if you, if he, if if Peru was having breakfast in Santiago, none of this would have happened. You, you know what? I, properly run. Yeah, you know what? Every time I wake up, I just start thinking about. That. You know, it would have been much better under the rule of the Inca. But the thing is this: the, yes. the, the feminists do it because they claim that it's. Here's the thing: they claim we are changing the language. Because we we want to erase the binary thinking brought to us by the colonizer, and I, I'm like, <laughs> and, and the I'm, and and I'm a like, way yeah. to talk. Yeah, and I'm like, okay, but here's the problem: you're using a, a, a made-up term 
that came from Spain, the very country that colonized us. So it's kind of hypocrite to tell me that in the first place. Just the same thing of you using Latinx is something that came from from the United States. That and and as we did, we were discussing this before. This is something that was born out of academia. This was not something that he was born because of a group of people say, hey, you know what? Let's start using the X because we, we want to be inclusive with all the folk, the, all the folks. Oh, yeah, they're, they're, they're saying folks with X now. Or because us in Latin America start using the term and it was funny and it spread across the countries. No, it was invented in yeah. another country to fight oh, colonialism. Yeah. It's, so it's, I don't yeah. understand. We're, we're fighting colonialism using With the Marvel. terms created in another colonial power. Yeah. Uh, well, also Tyler brought the, brought this earlier in, in Twitter and in our previous conversation that uh, we, that not uh, that is a, a small minority of people that actually uses this term. Even in exactly. the, according to the Pew Research Center. Um, the chart it says that 76% have not heard of Latinx, then 20% do not use it, and about 3% do use it. And this is according to the Pew Research Center. Mm-hmm. Basically, it's used on Twitter. Yeah. <laughs> outside the internet, outside, outside the, the Twitter sphere, and these very tiny groups of people, it's not even used. And that's my problem. And I was trying to um, explain to white people that, for that, as Taylor said before, the the way our tongues and our language is mm, formed, it's very hard to add this. This, I I'm sorry for that. It sounds, okay. for example. Uh, for an um, English speaker, because the English is, is his first language, language, <laughs> sorry, um, to try to pronounce some Mexican words will be very difficult. For example, mm-hmm. abrir, tochimilco, son pantli, chicle. It's very hard because yeah. your tongue is not designed or is ha- hasn't grown like that. Mm-hmm. So it's hard for us, and no, they are like you can learn. You must, you must learn. And if a child in America can pronounce it, you should pronounce it. <laughs> so these people don't even understand the uh, how many people in Latin America doesn't speak English and will mm-hmm. not be able to really. Do that. You, you know what? You know, I want to touch upon that. That I think it was in, I once saw a, a statistic in Chile that said that despite the fact that we use the same books, that same English books and English texts that other countries use, Chile, for we have 50 million people, less than 5% can actually speak Spanish. And mm-hmm. less than that, and, and even fewer than that, like less than 4%. Can talk to talk to talk in a, like a, in a sense in, in a professional sense because the thing with English in South America is that it's usually linked to better work opportunities and mm-hmm. in recent years it has become much more important to learn English in South America than ever before because um, mere professions and the fact that people who learning have no English and in fact I actually put it in the curriculum are paid more than people who don't know about it but the thing. I, re- I wanted to, wanted to um, relate to that is one of the arguments that people who push Latinx give is that they say uh, that languages change and words change across time. We were talking about that before, before we started the episode. And I, no, I'm someone who knows a lot about history and stuff. And yes, languages change over time. There are words that always will change because people... Um, People interact with other with others with different languages. It's, Spanish has a lot of borrowings and a lot of words coming from other languages. We have a lot of Ar- Ar- Arabic influence, Germanic, English, uh, Romance languages. In, in here in South America, you have to add the many native languages we encountered. But the thing is, is that that happened naturally. 
that didn't happen because someone immediately say we need to change it. And even as someone who doesn't even speak the language in the first place. Because when I see the people pushing Latinx, these are people who don't look like me. These are white guys. <laughs> these are white guys from California who think they know better than me, even though I live here in the third world. Exactly. That, and, for that's them, my and for word. them, for them, when when it's funny because when I I've, I've shown pictures of myself on Twitter, and people have called me white. Yeah. Like, no, me too. I'm not, I'm not white. You look whiter than you look whiter than me, and I'm I'm like the whitest <laughs> amongst you, everyone. You're the, the you, you're the eternal light. Okay, like you're you're I, supposed to be white, but then they, they they look at me and say, "No, you're not a Latino." You're... I'm like, "No, actually, there are Latinos with pale, with pale skin." Mm -hmm. And and it's interesting the fact it's interesting that that ridiculous idea because I've said it many times. Americans have such a narrow view of race and culture. Mm -hmm. Like you can show them five people from Eastern Europe, a Romanian, a Moldavian, a Russian, and they will see just a white guy. But no, they don't see past that. They don't see the culture. They don't see the difference between behind that. It's funny that they think that every uh, Latin American has to be brown. Which and that they want to be racist. And that's very racist. But they want to erase us white uh, Latino. No, 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 no. And no, let me let me. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Uh, that these people in California or New New York uh, try to erase our culture and our life experience living in Latin America and mm -hmm. living in a tier in a tier world country. World. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. And sorry, I get excited. And no, I it's fine. Um, it's fine. It's fine. Like, um, but like, they don't understand because they they feel, and these third generation immigrants, uh, which I am not criticizing or saying they are they don't have a Latin heritage because they they have, but they don't understand. They they only came to Latin America for the holidays and don't even want to don't, don't even want to spend a lot of time in here because obviously it's better sometimes in America and they feel uh, more Latinos than us and mm. they want and the is, this like, basically your culture is kind of brought up by your upbringing and so if somebody true. was born and raised here they're gonna have more connection to American culture than like Mexican culture. True. Uh, it's like you, you, I like it's, it's like uh, I will say that it's more like relative relativist because, for example, take a take a German boy and having raised by I don't know his parents maybe Brazilian or or Colombian, and even though he's even though he was born in Germany and maybe looked different to the people around him. Because he's nurtured by a certain by a certain culture, he will be more closely to that than the one that, that he was born in. Because culture is, is transmitted; it's not mm -hmm. it's only inherited in the womb. And in the topic of how this relates to Latin to Latinxes, the thing is this: um, there's there are Latino communities in the United States, and they have been increasingly growing since decades, like since in theory, the 1930s, like before World War II. And the thing is relating to um, the numbers given in the last U.S. election. I'm not, I'm not going to talk about it, Eduardo. I just want to point out that one. Yeah, okay. Um, we're not going to talk about the election. It's just I'm just going to point out that the, seeing the numbers of people who, who voted Trump, there's a trend in, that in the as years go by, many Latino communities in the United States tend to vote conservative or tend to lean more right wing, and the reason why they do that is because these are people who came from almost nothing. To where they are now. These are people who own businesses, who have homes, who brought their entire families from from poverty to the, to this land of opportunity. And the reason, and when they're seeing, oh, oh, the Democratic Party, a party that claims to speak for me, suddenly says, okay, <clears throat> okay, this guy, this illegal immigrant, this guy who tried to cross the Rio Grande illegally, that guy is more of an American than you who have been living for more than twenty years here. And how does this relate to Latinx? Well, basically because you, the Latinxes are people who basically stolen valor. Like the, the way they claim to know, to speak about our culture, mm -hmm. when they don't know about it. Like there's this cartoon I, I one time watched that it was 
comparing a Latino character made by two different people. The first one was a very stereotypical Mexican boy with a calendar that only marked Cinco de Mayo. I love that. Saying, I think, hola, amigo, soy Diego, <laughs> y me gustan los tacos y celebrar Cinco de Mayo. <laughs> and, and, the, and, the, and there was like a, a soy boy down there saying, oh my God, yes, this is meaningful presentation i love it and then in the other the other side there was like a, a, like a mexican mariachi like a macho with a with a serpent gun fighting against a katrina and he was saying yo soy el güey de los balazos bueno pistola <laughs> bueno pistola <laughs> and he was created by a su super latino dude and then the same soy was like we have to cancel this and that is true. it's true they hate it like like it, i remember i got reminded that they claim that speedy gonzalez was racist <laughs> but we love Speedy Gonzalez. <laughs> like you, you and we love the Mexican Mario, and we love anything uh, that uh, dresses up in a mariachi uh, or in a costume related to us because we want to see that. It's I funny for so, us. I, I, to give I, an example, I, I would like to, in, talk, to talk about the uh, Mexican Mario. Yeah, uh, to, do you remember? Uh, in, in World War II, there was a unit of Mexican aviators. That uh, remember, guys, when we when we used to call this podcast "Los Tres Caballeros." Yep. Yes. So the, the th so one of the caballeros, who is uh, the Mexican one, he was used as the mascot for a Mexican aviator unit that fought that flew combat missions in the Pacific during World War II. Yeah. The, so my question is, yes, and um, the thing I want to mention with that is that it's funny that these characters, the white liberals, claim that they are racist. But we down south, we love them yeah. because we love anything that has to do with our culture because we, we are proud of what it is. Yeah. And well, uh, well, I would like to touch this on uh, of the topic mm -hmm. of Mexican Mario. I mean, we all, all have seen it, and I think yes, I uh, actually haven't seen Mexican Mario. I don't even uh, know. Mexican what Mario. Yeah, so well, uh, the, Lama, uh, back in September, wrote an article in, he, in her medium called Hispanic, Hispanic Heritage Month is Back. Oh, no. And she was telling there that he, the, 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 the person that started this uh, uh, outrage campaign against Mexican Mario was a Canadi Canadian girl with uh, Paraguayan descent, de descent <laughs> said that she a, can, a Canadian from, from with uh, you know um, with Para, Paraguayan heritage decided that oh. it was offensive to us Mexicans I mean and as Lama said he's not even the same continent he, he, well, he doesn't American. even go here yeah, oh, I mean, no. we, oh, also, by the way Paraguay, Paraguay, I have a question, I have a question are the, weirdest, are the weirdest Latinos of all like, they don't even speak Spanish they pretend they do. Uh, yeah, they speak what I need. Well, like, uh, well it's, it's, it's interesting that in Paraguay, 95% of the people uh, have, uh, well, uh, is uh, bilingual uh, in Spanish and Guarani. There's something I want to bring up in regards to uh, what happened yesterday. So what happened was that uh, Steam decided to have this sort of gaming festival. Yeah. And they call all the Latinos Latinx. And then I guess the host of the event has something to say. I'm going to read it out loud for everybody else to hear. Mm -hmm. Heartbreaking to see the responses in this thread, but I'm not surprised. Racist, sexist, anti-LGBTQ people try and fuck with marginalized groups by policing terms and language they deem woke. It's really actually about the word. They just seem to hate to see us shine. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I'm sorry, yeah. but I'm... I actually ratio you. I, I was very proud of that. Um, like yeah, I, I, uh -huh. I actually get offended by this because, like, like here's here's, like I'm sure Tyler can share this too. We have tried hard to learn Spanish. We have tried. We have spent time and time studying this and trying to speak it. And then these gringo assholes come in <laughs> and mess it up. And then I have to relearn it again because all this social justice crap. Like, it's like, um, it's like when Homer, everyone want to watch The Simpsons. And there's an episode oh, yeah. where Homer Simpson is trying to um, make a barbecue and he drops the instructions, <laughs> the English side of the instructions in the cement and he takes it out and it's all messed up. And he's like, he's looking at it. None of this makes sense. The grill. 
what the hell is Le Grill? <laughs> no, that, that's me when these people come out with these new or you know these these new words like this this Monroe doctrine of language. <laughs> you know, that's that's what this is. They they see this and it's like, you, uh oh, something's threatening our imperialism. Puerto Rican. A lot of Puerto Ricans do it. The the, the 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 there's a for example like you know in English is I call you back. Well in in, in, in Puerto Rican say se te llamo para atrás. <laughs> like, it, like, it doesn't even Spanish. make sense. Uh, yeah, like th that's Spanglish, and well, I don't have a problem with that. Like, the, the, my problem is that inevitably, what you're doing is that you're mixing something that do that doesn't work that way. And and the thing about Mexican Mario that made me laugh a lot is that non Mexicans, like for me, I fucking love Mexican Mario. Like, it's amazing. Like, I, again. It's funny that the people who get annoyed at this are not part of the culture. They get offended on behalf of other people. Exactly. And like but, and my question to the floor, all these people mm -hmm. is that we need to change our language so English speakers could feel, could feel better. For o sea, Why we need to do that? If you, you want, want to, to fight colonialism want to with colonialism? Understand? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's not just that, but like every single Halloween, like I see these people just complaining about, oh, you cannot wear this sombrero for Halloween because that's offensive to Mexican people. I'm like, dude, like, of course, they're not going to be offended by someone wearing the hats from their matter of fact, they sell the hats to people. That's because they want people to appreciate their culture. And the funny, the funny part is that in Mexico, we dress up as gringos. And we make fun of them. Yeah, we, yeah, <laughs> so we, we, do it, we do it here too. We we do it here too. And and again, it's not it's not fucking racist again to wear a mariachi costume. Like for me, for me, for me. I mean, if I walk down the street, if and suddenly I watch a gringo dressing himself as a wasso, that is a is a, a traditional character from Chilean culture. I'm not going to be offended. I'm going to love it because I love when people appreciate one's culture. Like, I rem that well, reminds me. A, a, a I... small, a small, quick, quick, uh, Ernest. That reminds me to a. To, it's like a side note, but it takes, but it actually relates to this. That there was like a, Adele once tweeted a picture of her in Jamaica. Yeah. With, oh, yeah. With, Jamaica wearing, Congo, wearing Congos and Jamaican costume. And a lot of people were angry. And, and the funny thing is this. Uh, there were Bantu knots, and, and Bantu knots, according to African Americans or black people in America, they they say that no, you can't use it because it's blah 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 blah. But then in the comments, there were tons of Africans saying, "Who the fuck are these people? Like that's amazing." <laughs> and it's the same thing with us. Like we love when people do that we, and appreciate our culture. When, yeah. when you're eating, uh, when you're eating a taco, an empanada, or an arepa, and, and having fun with that, that's that's amazing. You're sharing because you're you're experimenting that. And you are culture. welcome to experiment our culture. I mean, mm, uh, yeah, only done uh, in okay, and, and, and about the Adele thing. I mean, Adele uh, was born in Tottenham, in north the, in the north part of London. And there's a big community of Jamaican immigrants there. Oh God, yes, there she, is. Uh, she grew. Yeah. She grew up around these people. They, uh, so I mean, I think if if somebody respects Jamaican culture, Isabel. I mean, because well, like it. She it is. Look at me. Growing up, she partake in the, in that culture. Maybe. Well, like look at me. And also, there, there. I wanted to mention something. <clears throat> Once uh, I. When I was in Madrid, in the in Puerta del Sol, the one of the main uh, squares in Madrid, uh, <clears throat> there were these mariachis playing well mariachi music. Mm -hmm. So what I mean, these mariachis were not Mexicans; they were Puerto Rican. <laughs> and I, I I asked them to play La Pelea de Gallos, a typical song from here, from Aguascalientes, for, for, from the Feria de San Marcos. And they played it. They they knew it. I mean, they didn't knew the part when you when people <laughs> say uh, "Viva was caliente sin," because we finish it like, we finish it like this: "Viva was caliente sin." 
So they, they only said Viva was caliente. So, well, well, you butchered it, but well, it's okay. <laughs> you play it. Yeah. Like, like again, if you enjoyed it, like I, I've said it many times, cultures are to be shared to be experimented, to be to be mm-hmm. experienced by people. Because you were born in a different environment, it's not that you are not allowed to do that. No, you know? and it, it, it's something that people have been doing for the entire history of the human. human. <laughs> I, sorry, I get, I, I always loud about the manhood in this term of humanity. Oh, it's I remember Justin Trudeau. No? Oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> <In my words. laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah well, no. well, as, oh, my God. Please, please, wait, he did that thing in, 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 in India. Please don't do it in... in I don't want to see that thing in Mexico. That that's gonna yes, be. I don't want to... I, do I, listen, someday, and that day may come soon, once the once the virus back when Justin Trudeau visits Mexico, he's gonna come off the plane looking like Ponce de Leon. Like that's it. He's just gonna have pantaloons and the the, the conquistador hat. And <laughs> um like his wife is gonna be dressed up like La Malinche. It's gonna be beautiful. I, I would say Cortez, but like Cortez is too much of a Chad for Trudeau to pull off. <laughs> um you know, so he he has to go with someone who's kind of a loser like Ponce de Leon. You know, um, mm. so, yeah. but like, oh, like, man. but like here, he will end like, up dressing up like I speedy Gonzalez because oh. he doesn't know anything. He, he, yeah, will come well. and say, he will arrive and says, hola, mis Latinx amigos. I don't know. I think, <laughs> the government house leader is, uh, I think the government house leader is either from Argentina or Chile, actually for Canada. Um, he's, he is at least Latino or semi, um, so maybe he's maybe he's gotten like a, a little bit of a of a education before he goes to um, Latin America, probably not. But you know, like we, we don't talk about Trudeau. Theory about he being the son of, of the Che Guevara. Oh, or, uh, Fidel oh. Castro. Oh. Fidel Castro. Oh. I, Fidel I don't. Yeah. I actually don't believe that. As much <laughs> I don't. But he's funny. And now I'm now mind you, he does look a lot. Like Fidel Castro did when he was younger. The thing <laughs> oh, is, yeah. as 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 loose moral as his mother was, I do not think she slept with Fidel Castro. Um, <laughs> I mean, but that would under that would make sense because just like communism, Trudeau is very disappointing. Um, but um, but like here, here's the thing. Like speaking from from my perspective, as as someone who you know, like I I've been to South America. I have, for the most part, embraced Latin culture to a extent. You know, there's lots of things that I I do that are, are very you know Latin. I like my I listen to my salsa music. I cheer on my my Alianza Lima. I mm-hmm. I speak Spanish around my house. I speak it to my friends. You know, I I appreciate it. You know, I'm I'm not gonna say that I'm I'm fully Latino, you know, but I I like the culture. I enjoy yeah. the culture. It's it's and you're allowed fun. To do so. It's you, vibrant. Mm-hmm. It's, and you are allowed to do so. Like things like these people, Joe Tirado want to do is that we live secluded in ghettos, not mm-hmm. allowed to Barrios. learn about Bar- other people. Barry X. I mean, I'm sorry, Barry X. We have to we have to take all the O's out of this because that's true. Patriarchal. And, and for um, me, when, when you ask me, like, what's funny is that this Steam event was in English. Do, you also notice too that he also had um, that somebody a while back was also talking about this in another post that Tyler um, put in in our chat, and they said it was like Latinx originated from. Latin Americans, trans and Afro Latinx communities, uh, like they literally put the O. They they take the the O out of Latin, out of Latino, mm. but they keep it in the Afro. Uh, so yeah. so like if you're gonna go through with this this nonsense, you, you gotta be a hundred percent. You can't just like pick and choose where to put that X to. You gotta put it in all those those O's. 
you know, because but other people are, say the use of Latinx is because this gender neutral, non binary stuff, blah blah blah. And this girl was telling me that uh, first of all, she was, I was telling her, we don't use Latinx, and she uh -huh. was like, it's people in your culture pushing for acceptance of the of of the word. Insta for instance, much, muche, muxe, muxe, sorry, muxe. Oh, I, I, People, know, I know about, the, I know about mm -hmm. those. But this, the, uh, muxe, muxes are these non binary and something travestis, uh, indigenous people from, I don't remember if they are. I think they were from Tlaxcala. Zapotecos. Zapotecos or Tlaxcalatecas. But uh, they are from a, a very specific uh, indigenous group. Sometimes they sh share other characteristics with other. Um, I mean, muxes could be found in some indigenous groups in Mexico. And mm -hmm. muxes were like a person with a tourist spirit which doesn't identify themselves as men so they portray themselves as women but it was like this mystic and sacred character it was not like non-binary and transgender people right now it was it has a very specific and religious connotations it's like a role in the community like it's completely different from uh -huh. because because the thing I, one of the things i mentioned to you guys before i start we started the episode was that when you um looked at it under the lens of uh well, realistically if latinx is because people who identify themselves as non-binary or something like that need this word okay but there are very few like and this they is could, not they could use mostly yeah, like here's the thing. I I, I know that the people around that there I have a, have a mutual that is actually identifies as herself as non-binary, but the um, the perspective is is that you're very few and you want to change the language that is, I think I think Spanish is like the third most spoken language in in the world right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You yeah. want to change the entirety of the third most spoken language in the entire world. For like I don't know, like a hundred thousand people to police some people, to police some and, and police also police by some people and police by white. In, in fact, I want to share you something. Um, so when so when I see this guy Joe Tirado commenting on the the next thing, I commented on I commented and said, "Amigo, we don't need your progressive shit. It's offensive to us down south that you want to enforce a word that is not us. <laughs> it's only about you. Latinos hate you." And then he tweeted at me, haha, you are the problem. You're using the strategy of the colonizer to try and police who is enough for you and divide us. You know what? You, you, you just a bit self-aware right there, amigo. Latinos don't hate me. People who don't value being inclusive do, and that I can deal with. What? Okay, first of all, uh, people who don't value being inclusive, uh, that's not the same as Latino. Latinos still hate you. And, and, and again, I come and I said to him, Mao, you're dividing us, but your stupid word that doesn't go in our language. You're policing what we say and act. It's not me. And yes, Latinos hate Latinx because it's a slur, a word that only fits in the narrow view of the gringos. And then the guy responded to me, I have never policed anyone's language to Latino, Latina, Latinx. You, you, you did. Seems, seems you got triggered and are making a lot of assumptions right now. Okay. I, I okay. For first of all, amigo, when I see your profile pic, it's clear to me that you are the guy that you are the guy who calls her who calls her granny abuela and think that eating tacos from Taco Bell is is racist. <laughs> no, l l let me tell you this once and for all. I don't I don't care if this guy hears me or not. But here's the thing: you are trying to divide who is Latino or not. You did it in the election, the moment Florida went red, I was seeing in real time white liberals and even black black ones. And black people. Black people. A lot of black people hating on Latinos. Cubans. 
and other Latinos who were living in Florida, they were being demonized in real time because they didn't ascribe to your worldview. And sorry, if I don't ascribe to your worldview and I start being called white, let me tell you this, you don't get to do that. You don't get to do that because Latino is a culture. It's not a race. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be brown to be a Latino. Again, and you don't nice. get to explain, is the eternal, explain eternal us Anglo, and he's more like, yeah, yeah, and Ernest is the eternal Anglo, and he's more of a Latino than this guy. Exactly. Tyler, Tyler, is, is, from, Tyler is from fucking Maryland. Um, like, like, and, and this is the funnier <laughs> thing when you say this. Here, here's the funnier thing. I'm literally like a legally, regist, uh, legally recognized Native American. I'm not even joking. <laughs> I'm True. like, like you call me the eternal angle and I'm an Indian. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, I'm not like, I'm, I remember you are like Elizabeth Warren with 60 or 0.4% of like, I'm, I'm more like, listen, like I'm, I'm proud to say I am much more American than Elizabeth Warren natively. Oh. American, <laughs> if one may so one may oh, say, yeah. but, but but, but the, anyway. the thing is, you don't have to be an indigenous or Latin American or white or black or mestizo but, to be a mm -hmm. Latino. You True. just need to share our culture. Yeah. And these people don't understand that because they want to compare a lot of stuff, for example, with the Muxe stuff. Latins and Muxe are not the same because Latins is they want to use it from everyone and Muxe is for a very specific a specific group of people so they don't even understand and they want to teach us our culture is like why well, <laughs> sorry but no you don't understand that because you you don't uh, you don't live here you don't uh, grow up with this stuff surrounding you and you ha you may um, like it and you may enjoy it but if we are telling something to you, maybe you should listen to us. And then they start talking about the aggressive colonial construct of Spanish. And I was like, yeah. you are doing the same. And we, as, for example, as Mexican, we embrace our Spanish heritage because everything that represents in Mexico to the world right now it was, it's a mix up about indigenous and Spanish stuff. For example, the food. We 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 wouldn't have the tacos or carnitas or a lot of stuff that came thanks to the Spaniards because they brought to us a meat and chicken and pork and they even brought to us the the textile industry and the, I don't know how to, uh, Talavera, mm -hmm. these uh, plates and, I, I don't, <laughs> do you know how, what Talavera is? Talavera, yeah, from, from Puebla. It's like a cer oh. uh, ceramics. Yes, yeah, ceramics, ceramic. sorry. And that technique, that it's a Mexican technique, it was invented thanks to, to the knowledge of the Spaniard, the Spanish, the and indigenous people and indigenous material. So we embrace the mestizaje and we embrace the Spanish heritage. We don't want to erase that. And only people in uh, America and some walk people in Mexico want to erase that. And I I don't know if they understand if we erase all the Spanish uh, uh, heritage, we will erase Mexico itself. Mm -hmm. like, but like this, um, Mukse, it's actually the same thing as something that I saw in India. Because um, <laughs> India has something similar. They have the, the Hijra. Um, and that is a whole different kettle of fish, let me tell you that. Um, you wouldn't think that a place like India would have, um, something like that, but by God, they do. And they have half a million of them. Um, the festivals are quite interesting too. Um, 
No, like, no, like, literally, um, like, just as kind of like a little interesting side note from, from all this, but, like, since everyone was mm -hmm. talking about, like, the, the Mook saying that, like, the Hijras have this ceremony where they, they marry uh, a god called um, Aravan, I think his name is, and um, the reason that they chose him as, as their deity is because in, in uh, the Indian epic, the Mahabharata, um, Aravan sacrifices himself in, in a battle. And I think Krishna gives him, um, he says, I'll grant you a, a wish, whatever one you want. And he goes, I want to be married before I die. And he marries him to his female, um, his female avatar. So they construed that as he, he's transgender. Um, it's quite an interesting festival. It's like 18 days long. It's, 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 I've, I've mm. never, I've, 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 I've seen some videos on it, never got to experience it, but it was, it was, it was interesting. Um, and the British couldn't get rid of it. Uh, they tried and it did not work. Um, but you know, like it, it, it does bother me when I have people come in and, and try to, um, impress, you know, this, left-wing um gringo imperial like neo-imperialist ideology on mm. like spanish language and it, it it's funny because i've literally been i and everyone sees my tweets i usually say like whenever somebody says something about latinx i'm just like it's not a thing i'm just i'm like please argue with me on this please mm -hmm. and no one ever fights me on it like they'll fight me on everything else they will literally, if if I say anything else, they will. But for some reason, if I say that, maybe it's because I have like a Peruvian flag in my bio. I don't know. Um, <laughs> maybe. But people fight me over days because maybe because I'm white. I'm white, and they <laughs> always like, fight me. Look at my profile picture in Twitter. I'm I'm literally wearing a Panama hat. There's nothing more gringo looking than that. You know that that's actually <laughs> that's really similar to me when I. Uh, <laughs> When I post images of Spanish conquistadors, like there's this meme I really love. There's a Spanish dude with a smug face laughing, and his side is a uh, morenita blushing, and, him, <laughs> and it, 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 they get angry at when I post that because the thing is, is, they want to take everything from from our culture, but us, and not only that, they want to whitewash our entire history. They want to pretend certain things that happen because here's the thing: there is a um, uh, plaza in Ciudad de México, La Plaza de las Tres Culturas, mm -hmm. it is named as such because they're 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 represented are the three faces of Mexican history. There is a uh, the remains of an Aztec temple, a church from the conquista, and the modern buildings. It's also the place of the infamous Massacre de Tlatelolco in 1968. Mm -hmm. the, the, yeah, yeah. Yeah, the... And, and, and the thing is that there's a stella right there that describes that describes that in certain day the Spaniards the Spaniards attacked the city of Tlatelolco and defeated the Aztec the Aztec army and it says that that moment was the birth, the violent birth of the Mexican of the Mexican people because the mestizaje the process from which most Latinos came from was not pretty, but to me, pretend that we have to keep uh, the rest of our lives like acting as if no colonial violence, blah 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 blah. No, I think that if we keep doing that. We're not going to go any further. We need to acknowledge that yes, that was our history. Yes, it was violent, mm -hmm. but we are here because of that. Like every yeah. every major power has colonized, has taken control over certain people. And the effects of that is still felt to this And the day. thing is the, that a lot of indigenous group uh, uh, get unite with the Spaniards to mm. fight against the imperialist power that exists in that time. For in in Mexico, it was the Aztecs and Peru, the the Incas. True. Like here in Chile, we have a word that is yanacona, and in some cases used respectfully. Yanaconas were uh, servants 
of the Spaniards. There were people that served the Spaniards to fight against the Inca, and they will later fight against the Mapuches here in southern Chile. Mm -hmm. the, the thing is, is that a lot of people, every time I see these Latinx posting about the history of Latin America, they, they omit that portion of the, con of the conquista. For them, it's just, oh, Spain came, Spain killed, Spain conquered. Exactly. No, exactly. no. It's and for example, they, uh, uh, from Mexico, they completely erase the violin history that Aztecs and Mayans used to have. For example, uh, the Zompantli is mm -hmm. a wall built entirely of um, bones and schools from the enemies. <laughs> And people to who were sacrificed to the gods, so it was very, very, very uh, violent. And they for pozole, mm -hmm. the traditional uh, food in Mexico, it was made with human flesh and human meat. So you can talk to me about how Spaniards were so awful. Because in the Unos were awful too. Well, it's the same with them. Um, it's the same with like in India because in India they, um, when the British first came in, there was this really interesting um, uh, ritual that um, the Indian, the Hindus, and that would do when there was a um, a wedding or when there was a funeral for a husband, and it was called sati. And um, what that would mean was that when the husband died. So did the wife. Um, they literally yeah. took her and threw her on a funeral pyre with him um, and burned her alive. So the British kind of went over and they were sipping their tea. And one day, you know, um, William goes by and says, oh, I you say, what is this? Place. No, he's uh, <laughs> pretty much. He's like, I say, what is this? What are they doing? Oh, oh, setting women on fire. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> you got, who's, you, uh... who's going to cook all our dinners? You got Bandit. a license for them, mate? You got a license to burn your wife? But <laughs> but no, like 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 the Brit like, like the British saw this and they were just like, we're not we're not gonna let you do this anymore. We're we're, we're really sorry. Um you're happy to do whatever else in God's holy name you want to do, and then um, but you can't burn the women. They're for sandwiches, not for burning. Um <laughs> And, and and listen, I gotta say, I'm only joking. I'm only adding a bit of humor to the conversation. History of colonization actually relates to this subject. It, it, does, it, it does, but I mean, like, like I'm pretty sure, but like, like the, the British did a good thing in this. Um, then they went and kind of <laughs> shot a bunch. Well, then they kind of like destroyed the Sikh Empire, and that didn't go very good. And now the Queen has a diamond that is very incredibly cursed, and if any man wears it, he dies. Um, I, I need actually the do, Um, yeah, give it to Amlo. Um, but um, not for me. <laughs> but um, but um, now that that diamond is literally a real thing. It's called the Koh i Noor, the Mountain of Light. Um, and every man who has ever handled it has died a horrible death. Um, it's it, it's really interesting, actually. It's kind of cool because I, I, I like it read because I didn't know that. And it looks I, I'll send you a link about it. I'll Thank send you, you a link about it. Um, it's, uh, by the way, it's um, without being uh, sidetracked too much, but the thing is um, when it comes to like, uh, again, history of the colonization of the Americas, and it actually is the same with, for example, Africa and India, the fact that every time you hear these people talk, they will always talk about all the evils of imperialism, blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. but, but then again, let me tell you this, this, uh, Whitey, you are using your position as a member of possibly one of the most influential countries in the world to influence our language, our way of life, because you don't like it. And, and not just to influence, to force it, because they don't force. do it uh, in a very gentle and friendly way. They force and they push and they shame you if you don't want to use it. And that's my problem because I, yeah. I don't want to be forced by you to change my language and to change my culture just to please you and just to make you feel better. Like you, you, you go on and on and saying that, oh, no, we need to hear about my 
We need to hear the experiences of people of color from other places. And when their experiences says, like the Latino says, actually, I don't like I don't like you using using your your position to influence to attempt to influence and force me to change my language. The African says, well, you know, actually, I'm sick and tired that African Americans claim to like represent us when all they do is take bits and pieces from thousands of cultures. And that's black culture. How, how you notice that? Like, like when you when you see what what in the United States the black community calls black culture, it's bits and pieces of various African countries. Like, it's, like, and again, he's I'm from, and the thing is that someone will claim, hey, but if it's Latino culture, then then why is no black culture? Well, it's very simple. Latinos, we all share a similar background. We share a language. We share our cultures are very similar because we were colonized by the same countries, Spain and Portugal. Africa is extremely diverse to this, so that's why it's different. And without getting sidetracked, um, if I can say like uh, a bit on the on what's going on recently, is that I'm, I'm seeing more and more uh, on Twitter Latinos fighting back. And that actually makes me quite happy. It, it makes I me love happy. the memes. Yeah, like just literally just yesterday they had the chorus what Steam had with the whole entire game festival and there was like a lot of Latinos in the comments just going against them. True. Yeah. I saw. It's, I was seeing it too. Like, there's this also this nice meme that shows like a like a white guy saying, "Hello, mis amigos Latinx," and there's like we got Colombian and Uruguay and Argentinian, and they were saying, "Shut the fuck up." <laughs> but it's true because we don't we don't care about your input. And, and the thing is, this they're not gonna risk their privileged lifestyle to come down here and talk down to us because and to experience, and to experience yeah. because they don't they don't yeah. actually Cayete uh, Gringo or something Cayete Gringo <laughs> and I don't want to be rude like that but those people really piss me off and the the Mexican or oh, the Latinos who actually want to use or to enforce the term Latins are or very own person uh, version of whites and walks and lefties and they all they only copy what what is happening and what is being said in america and trying to force it in here and it's very funny because the minute you you say i don't like it or i am not agree with that and i don't think like that or for example i like donald trump or i support certain stuff these people start telling you the a uh, lot of racist stuff like you you want to be treated treated like a white but you will only be working cleaning or seeing a Sabiner or and really offensive stuff, and mm -hmm. it's like what is wrong with working in cleaning or what is wrong working in farms or in I don't know. It, maybe yeah. these people need to address their own um, ideas and they and how they talk to others because they are very racist. Mm. They are yeah. copying everything, everything from the leftists. Yeah, th these, these are they, are, they are, they are very the racist terms they use. Like the, the, the um, the how I call this? Like when they start, for example, painting Latinos as just Mexicans. Mm -hmm. Like they, they don't see past Mexico. Like from is Mexico, and then there's there's this uh, Portuguese Mexico. Then there's, little Mexico. <laughs> Chile, there's this Chile that is long Mexico, beach Argentina Mexico. that is white. Uh, what? Beach from white Mexico. Elong, elong, elongated beach from Mexico. Yeah, and, and, and Argentina is white Mexico, Mexico, which is Peru. <laughs> 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 oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah it's, 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 just, it's just that you know what you're what you're what you're just doing with that by forcing these things is that you are guaranteeing that an entire generation of young Latinos grow up to hate you 
and in the future is gonna is gonna cost you real bad you're gonna look past at that and you're gonna say how, why did i do that and, and let me tell you the fact that the latino community in the united states is growing is just telling me there will be a point in which it will be so large that they will just tell you they will throw you a big middle finger and says okay gringo shut up <laughs> it's, it's just as simple as that like i, I can't understand like, even even white guys or white people like no don't understand why they use that term that they hate it and and, and i appreciate that like, i appreciate that we're all we're all uh, like latinos in this in this struggle like hashtag todos somos latinos that, 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 that I, be... I found some people that some white people and black people who want to understand and uh, start using latinx because they think they it will be offensive to use latinos but it's sad because they only the the only source of information or it's lefties and white people and it's like no you need to address us and listen to us maybe some people in the united states feel comfortable with that term but not for us not for people living in here but it's, it's like that American kind of like need, I guess, to or even I shouldn't even say American. I should say like leftist mentality that what's good for one, what's good for some is good for all. And, you know, that that's what they want to do. They want to spread this this idea. And I mean, they've already ruined Chile with all this left wing mm -hmm. crap. I mean, yeah. you know, which is good for me, you know, because I get the Waskar back and everything is great. I get I get my sacred boat. Um but but no, like but they they go about this and back to one other thing like earlier you guys were talking about like people who, who dress up for like in, in Halloween and that as like mariachis and, and things like that. Um I gotta admit I find one thing obnoxious when I go to Peru and I see these like gringos dressed up in like um ponchos and like the the, the little hats um and they're going around trying to speak Keshwa um in the middle of Lima um <laughs> I've actually seen that happen and it, it it's really funny because there's nothing that's nothing sh shouts like um I'm trying to be Latin like wearing a poncho made of llama thick llama wool in 25 30 degree temperatures <laughs> um with the little with the little chula hat on your head too, so you're <laughs> like you're literally boiling your brain inside inside your skull with it um <laughs> like it, it it that 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 part kind of annoys me i gotta be honest with you um because it's it's almost patronizing but like I say this, and I wear Alianza Lima like jerseys and stuff, so I, I'm really not one to talk. But no, I, I just wanted to point that out. Like for some people, like I, and it just bothers me when they when they go overboard. You know what I mean? It, it almost seems like it's patronizing or, or tacky. Um, you know, it's 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 kind of like how do I say this? Um, you know, the guys used to who who wear Fubu um and dress up like like i don't know like ice cube on on like friday <laughs> and they're like the <laughs> whitest guys you've ever seen in your life and you just know they shouldn't be dressing like this but they some re but for some reason they are that, <laughs> that's that's literally what i get from that that's the kind of vibe it's like you should not you should not be dressing like this um although the one that i saw dressed in the heavy poncho ended up getting robbed so, you know, the, it kind of suits, it kind of uh, solves itself. Uh, but, yeah. Other funny stuff is about it is that there's a lot of stereotypes of the Latinos that I actually enjoy seeing in on in TV shows or in other stuff. And that that do, doesn't bother me. For example, <laughs> Gloria from, from Mother Family. It, it's actually very funny to me. <laughs> but Latins, 
-hmm. just piss me off. And yeah. uh, this uh, tries um, um, leftist stuff that they think are designed to be inclusive and to be uh, respectful, only make it worse. For example, I was reading about this burrito uh, shop or restaurant that was opened in New York and a fruit, fruit store uh, with um, aesthetic, a lot Mexicanized aesthetic uh, oh. to, to portray it as a fruteria. Uh, Eduardo. Um, and people, uh, white people get so angry and start complaining and start and started uh, a complaint, a complaint, and they sh shut down the the restaurants. And I was I was very sad and angry about it because these people are trying to make a a, a work and to make a money and to have something in their life, and you are shutting it down because you think it's racist. But you don't understand that that doesn't is cultural appropriation or racist at all. In Mexico, we have we have a lot, a lot of um, restaurants from Chinese food, pizzas, hamburgers, and and even change it with Mexican recipes. And so we need to shut it down to not be racist and to not. Uh, there's, only, out. there's only one thing I got to say about that. And this topic about the food in Mexico, like I remember seeing something that was like so ridiculous, right? There was, of course, like this, you know, bag of Doritos, right? And of course, mm -hmm. we approved the, the tortilla chips from the Doritos. And then, so what they did. They took the Dorito bag, they put all this sort of stuff like pig fat and whatever sauce, and they sold it back to people that way. <laughs> well, it, it also like, um, it reminds me of this this restaurant near my town. Um, I'd rather remember, um, Por que es, uh, Mi Choros Están Verde? Uh, mm -hmm. I remember I, I went to this place. And it's done up as a Mexican restaurant. It's literally owned by white people uh, um, yeah. who I'm pretty sure have never been to Mexico. The green churros. Yes, the green churros. Um, the most unnatural and unholy thing that I've ever had in my entire life. Um, <laughs> um, and they had llamas. Um, like little like paper mache llamas everywhere too. Like... To, it, it actually hurt my soul to enter this building and and to see these things because I, I then I then literally tweeted and, and DM'd like a bunch of my, my Latin friends. I was like, guys, why are my churros green? Can somebody please explain this? Um and no one could give me an answer. Um well, actually in Mexico there's a green churros that but they are they are not sweet. They are like, um, Please how do you, uh, Eduardo, how do you say los chetos the in chetos. English? The chetos? Los chetos verdes. The green chetos? Ajá. Uh, Son como churros. Yeah, ya ves los que yeah. venden afuera de la, los que venden afuera I, de la escuela, uh, la salsa. Yeah, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Well, these are like uh, frituras uh, that are that are uh, that look like chetos, but uh, I mean chetos have more taste, and these ones so, uh, <laughs> sometimes feel like. Uh, uh, but every child in Mexico uh, have yeah. proved. Yeah, I mean, if you want to, t if you want them to taste something, to like something, you need to put. Uh, uh, sauce in, in them because they are uh, tasteless chetos. They and they feel like uh, cardboard in your uh, in your mouth. I don't that, like that. I don't like them. But they I, are green. They yeah, are green. They are, they are green. But so maybe yeah, it was like something like that. <laughs> I I don't know. Someday, if I can ever convince Eduardo to come up to Newfoundland, I'm going to take him there just to just to trigger him. <laughs> uh, 
But do you know what? I, I, I got to point this out really quick, and I'm really happy to mm -hmm. announce this. We have 50 subscribers. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, really? Amazing. Yeah, yeah. We got 50. That's, you know, hey, like, we're, we're not Tyler, but we're close. Yeah, um, it's a, it's is that I don't get offended by these restaurants, meetups, and uh, silly stuff um, portraying an incorrect style or incorrect items because in Mexico or in other parts of Latin America, there's a lot, but a lot of restaurants uh, that mess up with the food from other countries. For example, in here we we put chimichurri to the pizza. Oh, I hate chimichurri. Oh, yeah, I love chimichurri. Mm. Oh, no. <laughs> it's mm. spicy. So yeah. we we don't, we can ha we uh, we put pastor or beef and a lot of stuff in the pizza. So we. Oh, don't I'm just kind of curious, like just just going about the pizza. Like, why do Mexicans put ketchup on pizza? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Not an American. Here, it's not Don't American. Start. Don't start. Why? Why you, you didn't have two autos. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, seriously, I always thought that Americans uh, put ketchup in the pizza. No. Um, no, it's <laughs> sauce. It's 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 tomato sauce. Um, by the way, the. If the Mexicans are nowhere near behind as the Indians on pizza, they had when I went to when I went to New Delhi, they had sweet corn as a topping. We have that in here too, I think. But that's uh, unholy. But we we mess up with a lot of stuff, so we can complain about people in other countries messing up with us with our stuff because it will be hypocrite, and I don't get offended. That that is what happens with the culture and with the appropriation uh, or organic appropriation uh, when two cultures and two groups of people um, have been dealing with each other for a time. You take what it, what you like from one and you use the other part that you like, and that's that's fine. That's how culture works in humanity so the this this uh, new trend to try to categorize and to try to only chinese people can sell chinese food only mexicans can se can sell burritos it's moronic maybe if you want a real burrito you should come to mexico if you want to taste a uh, real Chinese food, you should go to China or a Chinese owned uh, by Chinese. I don't know if we should go to China mm -hmm. right now or, or <laughs> Well, if you want oh, a yeah. laptop. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, like, I, 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 I don't want another pandemic or I actually, you know what? It's just not a good place for Canadians to go right now because um, we all end up in jail there for some weird reason. <laughs> Thanks, I only um, want to add that Huawei. street tacos doesn't count. Uh, a pandemic, even if they are made of dog. <laughs> but their street tacos are healthier and cleaner than that bad soap that is there. The what's interesting is that, like, well, a lot of people, we don't just eat like food on the street, like, we just eat the food in restaurants or somewhere fancy than on the street. That's Yeah. Well, but you, in Mexico, people have a lot, a very strong stomach to endure a lot of street food. <laughs> but that's the point. Mm -hmm. You can share your culture and you can use it. And you don't have to say um, new rules from your point of view, especially if you're a gringo and you're a leftist, and you live in a very big city, and you try to uh, dictate or to force a person who lives in, in a tiny town in a third world country. <laughs> <laughs> and that's my conclusion about the term Latins. 
Yes. Um, as off topic as we've all been, this has actually been an interesting conversation. Um, and as the honorary Peruvian, I, I call an end to this. And Latinx is now banished. It's going down the memory hole. Yeah. And I will fight with me with memes. I, I I hate because I want to say memes, and I know it's <laughs> memes in English. <laughs> memes. Yeah, memes. but my, my conclusion of this whole thing is um to everyone out there who even if you're not a Latino, you you do a good job by actually making fun and exposing these people for what they really are. Exactly. Because again, they're trying to change an entire culture that doesn't fit with their narrative, that doesn't fit with their worldview. Like, look, I don't go there to the United States and claim they have to change things because I don't like them. There are things that I don't like about Americans, but I'm not going to go there and change them. You are using the position you already have, a privileged one of that, to change an entire language, an entire culture. That's why I take offense. That's why a lot of Latinos take offense Mm -hmm. And the more you keep doing this, you're going to lose adherence. You're going to lose people. And worst of all, the very same Latinos you claim to talk for are going to leave you in droves. And that, that's it, because as far from that, <sighs> it's just so tiresome. Like the fact that they claim now is because we want to be inclusive. You hate being inclusivity. I actually thing is that I don't think that, that I need to add an, a word to a word to an already established language to it because oh, oh oh my god i have to be uh uh inclusive no no, no 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 it's already latino or latina it's simple as that there, there's one more point i want to bring up before we all find out is that um it's like the uh the spanish Royal, the spanish royal academy also ran about this i think it was like a year ago and they also said that of course they don't recognize it as Official or Spanish, the R A E. Mm, e, <laughs> yeah, that that mean that mean that mean became. Yeah. Jesus. <laughs> oh my god! Yeah. But so that, my final that's... comment about this is that um, basically, like, unless you actually try to spend a bunch of time trying to study Spanish, unless you try to get to know the culture, unless you try to talk to the people. You cannot change the entire culture and entire language all because of you. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. And the next time you want to force Latinos to use Latins, you better try to pronounce Xochimilco or Zompantli mm -hmm. or Huizcantepultli. I, I, I couldn't even pronounce myself. Huizilopotli. <laughs> yeah. If you can pronounce it with Chilopostly, I will say Latins. Yeah, and um, well, I just want to add something that Lama once told us, and the, uh, that in, she's now in the chat, that when, uh, regarding the issues and problems and circumstances of Latin America and the Latin American people, everybody talks about us, but no, no one is talking with us. Exactly. Yep. So the, uh, it's this is a uh, part of it all that we are that they don't and uh, they, they don't they, they don't actually want to listen yeah, they, or to understand or to learn about Latin cultures. They only want to use us like props to feel inclusive and to feel exotic because they have and they like the Latins stuff. Cinco de Mayo, tacos. Mm. Exactly. Yeah, that's quite true, actually. And mm -hmm. I think that's about it. We have, uh, I think we have covered this topic uh, extensively. Uh, I don't know if anyone wants to add anything else. No, I, I have everything I wanted to give. Okay. Yeah, I think I have everything to say about this topic, too. Great. Nice. Same here. Nice. Yeah. So, thanks for everyone to come and watch us. Yeah. Thank um, you. I hope you liked our show. Uh, we are really grateful because thanks to you, now we are at 50 subscribers. Let's keep growing. Uh, once mm -hmm. once we hit a hundred subscribers, maybe we this thing will be, you know, moving faster. 
And True. Then- I just want to add that El Güero Pistolas. <laughs> it's uh, actually uh, a really yeah. taco, uh, <laughs> tacos place. <laughs> so it exists. El, ta- el Güero Pistolas exists. And um, it sells <laughs> tacos. El yeah, Güero Pistolas. I-, I would love to see that show <laughs> in real life. Yes, I want to see the show too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys for watching. Thanks for, for you guys to come to come here. Yeah. And thank you. Uh, thank you, Gabriel. Thank you, Tyler. And thank you everyone who was watching us. Um, and thank you very much for inviting me again, even if I keep interrupting people. No, no. No, no, no. Fine. It's fine. And don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> so Without further ado, we just want to say good night and see you in our next episode of Que Paso Podcast.